enabled on my smartphone. And as you get alerts, this thing will actually vibrate. So I've got an alert. Uh, let me stop this here. I accidentally started cycling. So let's get back to that notification bar. And you'll see that I've got a Facebook alert, some missed calls. Uh, you can get Google Hangout alerts. So there's a lot of useful information. And every time I get an alert, it just shows up on my wrist. I don't have to take this phone out of my pocket to see uh, who the email is from. You can see this email is just from AT&T welcoming me to uh, their service. Um, Facebook, I could probably got some alert from a friend who's just sent me a smiley face as a part of a message. Now here's the cool thing is that if I want to read more about this, I can actually just hit, let me go back to that Facebook alert. I can say show on device. Now if I unlock my Samsung phone, let's see here, let's try that again. Show on device. You'll see it actually launches Facebook and brings me to the message or the post that I was tagged in. So that's pretty neat. Now the thing I like about the Gear Fit the most is that I don't have to take this device, the, the Galaxy S5 out of my pocket every two minutes. When I get an alert, a, a text message, etc., I can just look at my wrist and see if it warrants actually pulling out my phone. I know that's probably the ultimate first world problem, but something that is uh, convenient. Now let's go back here and I'll just give you a quick tour of the device, the home screen you'll notice and all the text I'm reading is in vertical mode. That's because with the, when this is on your wrist, I found it really difficult to read uh, text in the horizontal mode because I can't bend my arm in a fashion unless I bend my head in a way that's easy to read. So Samsung's updated the software. They now show you the display in a vertical manner if you choose. From the home screen, you can either swipe uh, to the right for the settings, there's a notification bar which I just showed you. There's a media controller that lets you play music. So if I just hit play, you see the, the Galaxy started playing music. I can skip tracks back and forth, and raise or lower the volume. So pretty neat little options here. I'll go ahead and pause this music. You'll see that there's also the title of the track playing. I can go into settings, settings will change uh, the background, uh, you can change a couple of other options, uh, but let me just show you my favorite feature, because I'm always misplacing my phones. For those of you that don't know, I carry two or three phones at a time, I have about a dozen phones right now, um, but if I'm looking for a device, it's really easy, easy to find the Galaxy S5 with the gear fit, I just hit find my device, locate it, and it rings and flashes. So really, really cool um, feature. As long as you connect it by Bluetooth, it'll do this. Uh, with my iPhones and other devices, what I end up doing is using uh, another phone to call it. Uh, but this is much, much more convenient if I'm running out the door or something and need to grab the GS5. Go ahead and go the other way. So from this window, I can get into the fitness half of the, of the watch. Now, unfortunately, Samsung markets this as the Gear Fit, which would sound like it's all about fitness, and unfortunately, the fitness portion just doesn't work as advertised. So, a few problems here. Is the pedometer, it's not as accurate as the Fitbit or a couple of other devices I use. Went for a long walk yesterday, about 1.1 miles, and I use the exercise walking app here. And I went for a walk for just under 22 minutes, I knew the route and I double checked it on Google Maps as a one point mile walk and the gear fit only measured 0.5 miles. So half a mile in 21 minutes. That would like literally be like me crawling at that pace. Um, so it's just not accurate. It's really unfortunate because if you're trying to get in shape or if you're trying to maintain your health, you're obviously interested in how much you're walking or running. Now to get to another problem is uh, the only exercises that this can really manage besides uh, walking is running, cycling, and hiking. Any other activities besides that, it's not going to measure them. For the cycling app, you do need to have the phone with you. Uh, it uses GPS coordinates to track how you're running, or I'm sorry, how far you're cycling. And other than that, though, there's just not a mode to say, hey, I'm uh, 
doing something else I'm at, at a gym taking a class. Now something that I do like about the Nike Fuel Band and the Fitbit Flex is that it'll just measure that you're moving around and most people that are going to be buying these devices are not high performing athletes. They're people like me that work all day and just need to be reminded to get off their behinds and move around a little bit. And this is really unfortunate because the Gear Fit doesn't have that kind of functionality. In fact, with the pedometer, it doesn't just track you the minute you start walking when you wake up in the morning and you take your first walk to the kitchen or something. You actually have to hit start. If you forget to hit start like I did this morning, you get zero steps. Uh, that's a real problem. It's much better to have a system like this, the, which uh, will track each and every step. It also uses accelerometers to figure out, you know, maybe you're not walking, maybe you're not running, but maybe you're doing calisthenics or taking some kind of fitness class. It'll measure that. It might not be 100% accurate, but at least it measures that you moved around a little bit. This guy just doesn't do it unless you hit go on the pedometer. Going back to this uh, watch, and one nice thing that this has that my other fitness bands do not have is it has a heart rate monitor. I showed you how it has a sensor on the back, it measures your heart rate by getting really close to your skin and shining some light through it. Now, I'm going to take a second here to reattach this to my wrist. Um, one of the issues I have with this watch that's really disappointing is that the heart rate monitor is very, very sensitive. So. As you can see, I'm going to attach this to my wrist a couple inches above where I would normally wear a watch. So I have to move it up here, about there. And when you go into this menu, do heart rate, hit start. And if I talk or move around a little bit like this, it'll say, do not speak, stay still. And it gets really sensitive, as you can see, as I'm talking and moving. And then you'll get a message about the signal from your pulse is weak. Make sure you're wearing your gear properly. Now, I'm not really interested in what my heart rate is when I'm sitting here working in my office. I'm more interested in about my heart rate when I'm moving around. And the Gear Fit has a real challenge in taking your heart rate while you're moving. Now, when you're in running mode, you can set it to measure your heart rate continuously. But like I just demonstrated, it just doesn't do a good job of measuring your heart rate if you're moving. So let's do this again. I'll stay still. Hopefully I'll just There we go. We got a reading. And as you see the reading is just singular. It's 86 beats per minute and that's it. I can look at my history. But it's not in a chart. It's just one by one and it's just really kind of clunky. It's not it's not a really elegant uh way to get into shape and unfortunately the Gear Fit only works with S Health as of now. It's on its own proprietary little operating system. It's not actually uh, compatible with the apps built for uh, the Gear 2, uh, which is a more robust uh, version of this watch. It's not as sleek looking, it's big and clunky. I'm not a big fan of it personally, but at least it has some compatibility with RunKeeper, which is one of the more popular fitness applications. If you buy the Gear Fit and you're trying to get in shape, you're stuck with S Health. And S Health is just awful compared to RunKeeper and some of the other apps like uh, Fitbits apps, etc. You're really limited in what you can do. And it's kind of crazy because it duplicates a lot of the functionality on the Gear Fit. There is a motion sensor built into the, into the uh, Galaxy S5. So if you want to use the S5 as a pedometer, you can go ahead and do that. Same goes for exercise with uh, running and let's get in here, running, walking, cycling, and hiking. So this gear fit starts to be redundant when I, you look at it from a fitness point of view. One really odd thing is you get, um, is you get this option for more apps down here. Now, obviously, you know, you sort of think like, oh, RunKeeper. They're offering RunKeeper as an app. You open that up, you would think that it would work with gear fit. It doesn't. So, I mean, there's just all these oddities where it really feels like Samsung pushed out a product that wasn't ready for prime time. It is about 40 or 50% of the way there in terms of functionality of an app like RunKeeper. But just some of the things that you would really expect out of any fitness app these days just isn't there. Nike, Fitbit, 
um, RunKeeper. They all allow you to share your goals and share your results with friends and family members that are on the same platform. There's none of that in S Health. So it's this really backwards app that needs a lot of improvement. And when you combine the poor app for the gear fit with the questionable measurements that it's taking, it's just not a good good device if you're looking to get in shape. Um, it's too limiting and it's just not accurate. Over and over again, uh, we see these little discrepancies. Like I said, yesterday was a 1.1 mile walk. That was measured as five. I don't even want to think what would happen if I went for a long run and was all proud of myself for completing a long run. I looked down at this uh, gear fit and only measured half of it. That'd be really disappointing. So Samsung needs to go back to the drawing board. I really think they should stop marketing this as a gear fit, maybe rebrand it as a slim uh, smart watch of some kind and either that or iterate again and come up with a better product if they're going to focus on fitness. They're trying to do too much on one little device and it's just not working. My suggestion for people is to go ahead and buy a fitness band like this, which is about half the price if you're trying to get fit. If you're looking for a futuristic fancy smart watch though, this uh, might be worth $199. This is Xavier and this is a Samsung Gear Fit with the Galaxy S5.